Please, your class will be after one hour. Okay. No. Uh, yes, others. So let's start the revision of EMI. In electromagnetic induction, see what all things are important for you. The first thing that is important for you is magnetic flux. So magnetic flux can be asked to you in the exam. Phi is equal to B dot A, B A cos theta. This can be asked. And definition of magnetic flux also can be asked. Pay attention to what all things are important. Apart from this, SI unit of magnetic flux is also asked. Weber. And this relation that one Weber is equal to one Tesla meter square. It means you can use magnetic flux as well. Uh, you can use tesla meter square as well for magnetic plus as well as you can use weber fine now this is the si unit class here cgs unit is also important for magnetic flux so remember that one weber is equal to 10 to the power 8 max not 18 10 to the power 8 maxwell fine maxwell is the cgs unit why am I saying? Because some questions are there in your previous year from which uh, this unit has been mentioned. Maxwell unit is mentioned, right? Then apart from this, you have electromagnetic uh, Faraday's experimental laws also given. So Faraday's experiments are not very important. You just have to give it one reading for mm -hmm. Faraday's laws. All right, that is fine. Faraday's laws, you can just read it out once. The notes in which uh, notes are also written. More importantly, you have laws of EMI which are important. So two major laws of EMI you have. First law says what? That it gives the magnitude of induced EMF. Right. E is equal to d phi over dt. It gives the magnitude of it. So magnitude is rate of change of flux. This is the first law. Whenever magnetic flux linked with a closed circuit changes, EMF is induced in it, which lasts only so long as the change in flux is taking place. Right, the definition of EMI. Second law is basically this negative sign we sign that we put, which is Lenz law. So both the things you have to write whenever laws of EMI. So another thing that is important is laws of EMI. This can be asked to you. Even if you add n number of turns, so multiply this entire term with n, n number of turns. Fine. This is uh, about, and yes, Lenz laws specifically, apart from this, Lenz law can also be asked to you. Separately, Lenz law can also be asked to you. Fine. Like, what is the statement of Lenz law? So, you will have to mention that Lenz law states that the direction of induced current in a circuit is such that it opposes the cause or the change which produces it. The statement you have to mention. Right. So these are some important topics from the initial part of the lesson that we did. Uh, let us practice one or two questions, then we'll move on to other parts. Note down the question, try it yourself, and I'll discuss it. And those who will get their answers, send me in the chat box.
Yes, Akifa, correct. So only Akifa has answered. Let's discuss it now. See, differentiation will apply. If you know voltage, you know resistance, you'll be able to calculate the current. But how will you get the voltage? Voltage here refers to EMI only. Uh, sorry, EMF only. So how will you calculate the induced EMF? That will be D5 over DT. Forget about the sign. Sign is just telling you the uh, telling you about Lenz law. Here we are just concerned with the magnitude. So if you differentiate three, now see how we differentiate five t three minus one power is three minus one. One gets subtracted, so that becomes two. Plus four t is there. You will take the power and multiply. What is left? Two minus one. That is one. Plus two. Because t is there and minus 5, this is 0 because it is constant. Anybody who is having any difficulty in this differentiation, please text me right now. I'll explain it again. If you are clear and thorough with differentiation, then only we'll be able to understand this. So this becomes 15t squared plus 8t plus 2. Yes, Hamza, exact answer. Correct. So now t is equal to 2 seconds, we'll put. T is equal to two seconds, we'll put. Yeah. So if we put it, this becomes 15 into two square plus eight into two plus two. So that will be 78 volt. Now see here, we have to get in the value of current. Current will be 78 by five. So it will be 15.6 amperes. So two students have given the correct answers, Hamza and Akif. Note it down. Let's see some other questions. After this class, the next important topic from here is motional EMF. So formula and derivation of motional EMF will come somewhere. Write it down. That is important. See, derivation is very easy. You have to take out the area BLX. Remember, then we converted that into velocity and then BLV was obtained. So E is equal to BLV is very important because motional EMF term can also be mentioned as well as the formula usage will be there. So if from this topic only emotional EMF is important, rest of the Fleming's left-hand rule and all is not important. You already know the right-hand thumbs rules from the direction. Emotional EMF is important. Yes, from this topic, uh, power can be asked. Power, we did remember, power, force, and current. Current by dividing BLV by R, then force using ILB, then power using FV. Those three, remember, we did all these three. So these three can be asked. Let me just remind you. See this part. 
करंट इज इक्वल टू बी एल वी बाय आर फाइन देन फोर्स इज इक्वल टू सी आई एल वी इफ यू यूज बी आई एल वी है सो बी स्क्वेर एल स्क्वेर वी बाय आर एंड पावर विल बी इक्वल टू बी स्क्वेर एल स्क्वेर वी स्क्वेर डिवाइडेड बाय आर दिस uh let's practice some numericals from this uh one more thing one more thing class that, that is also important we had no a relation between induced charge and the change in the magnetic flux that is important so uh, remember we had dq over dt uh not dq over dt we directly had dq value of dq so dq is d phi over dt One by R. This can also be used. Okay. These three can be used in numericals. Mm -hmm. These can have the derivation part also. Ah, uh, let's see questions from this. E is equal to B L V.
three class it says that in such questions no just using e is equal to blv won't help that's why i've given this question this was actually a question from your previous year see it says that a circular copper disc 10 centimeter in radius rotates at 20 pi radians per second about an axis through its center and perpendicular to the risk yes. class whenever you see such a question where there is an involvement of an axis and a rim Wherever you see there is an involvement of an axis and a rim, then remember the potential difference or EMF you can say developed between the axis and the rim. This is always given by not just E is equal to BLV would help here. Here you have to use E is equal to half b r square omega this formula you'll use you'll get your answer in just one step so if you put it here this actually has a derivation and that derivation is not a part of your syllabus so no need to do that so half b magnetic field magnetic field is 0.2 radius is 10 centimeters so we'll write it as 0.1 meter square and this is this was angular velocity was 20 pi so 10 uh, double of 3.146.28 no so 0 0.0628 volt like this you will get your answer in one single line and marks will also be given and now see if you have once the potential difference current will be again emf divided by resistance 0 0.0628 divided by resistance was 2 yes so 0 0.0314 amperes like this this is voltage, this is current. Note it down.
see uh, if induced emf in a rotating coil is asked then remember we did it for ac generator ac dynamo e is equal to e not sin omega t e uh, not is equal to n b a omega this one this formula will be used right so e not whenever e not will be asked n b a omega this will be used let's practice a question on this then we move on to the last topic that is in
See a circular coil of area 300 centimeters square and 25 turns rotates about its vertical diameter with an angular speed of 40 per second in a uniform horizontal magnetic field of magnitude 0 0.05 Tesla. Now you have to obtain maximum voltage induced in the coil. Now, see, we'll use the formula E naught is equal to NBA omega. So, same formula we'll use number of turns, 25, magnetic field 0 0.05, area is 300 centimeters squared. No? So, 10 to the power minus 4 it will become. And what else is left? Omega, 40. Angular frequency is given as 40. So, answer will be 1.5 volt. The calculations were very easy for this part. Nobody answered. Quickly note down the solution. Then let's risk. See a formula of self-inductance we did. Phi is equal to Li, same way was with mutual inductance, Mi. 
where it was the uh, L is the self inductance and M is the mutual inductance. Then for self inductance of a long solenoid, we did this formula mu naught n square a by L. Or if you want to write it in number of turns per unit length, A into L like this. And then same way for M, this is mu naught N1 N2 A by L. So this is equal to mu naught N1 N2 A into L like this. This form, these formula, these were the formula. Now let us practice some questions based on this.
an emf of 0.5 would nobody answered this see it was a direct question from a previous year okay someone uh, kulsum has answered yes kulsum correct answer good henry si unit will be henry na hamza is also correct good hamza so uh, e is equal to minus m di over dt is the formula so uh, what do we have to find we have to find out m from here emf is 0.5 minus m is unknown uh, uh current changes so 5 from 5 to 2 so 2 minus 5 the change in the current will be minus 3 so this will become minus 3 by 300 milliseconds 10 to the power minus 3 so 100 then this will become minus minus will become positive M will be point zero five Henry. All right, noted down. Any doubts? If you have from this lesson, ask me. Noted down. so such type questions only come from ey like uh, questions also come uh, one question was there does the change in magnetic flux induce emf of current so like this you will have to mention the law the change in magnetic flux will always induce current right such type uh, till uh, just now uh, at your usual time class will end after 5 just 2 uh, to 3 minutes i'll end the class with that because your class started late but it will end at the usual time So in the next class we'll have the revision of AC and the rest of the lesson, AC and EM. Uh, anyways, so I was saying yes. One thing is also one question that also comes is that has I mean that has come in your exam was induced EMF is also known as back EMF. So that means it. Why do we call induced EMF as back EMF? Because it always opposes any change in applied EMF. All right, because the induced EMF always opposes any change in the applied EMF. That's why induced EMF is also known as back EMF. So such type of questions can also be asked. Or what is the basic cause of induced EMF? So you will tell that it is the change of magnetic flux linked with the circuit that will cause induced EMF. Fine, like this question will also come. Or um, the direction based question can also become, which is uh, which uses Lenz law. application of lens law or if it is also one question was there a wire that is kept along north south direction fine that is allowed to undergo free fall 
fall freely. So it was asked that will the EMF be still induced in the wire if it is falling freely? So answer will be no, because neither horizontal nor vertical component of Earth's magnetic field will be intercepted by the falling wire. That's why the wire that is kept along the north-south direction, which is allowed to fall freely, it won't be having any EMF. And then uh, definition of magnetic flux, SI unit of magnetic flux, definition of one Weber, then derivation of long solenoids, uh, inductance, self-inductance and mutual inductance. All these questions are important. So I hope this lesson is clear. Short lesson, it's a very short lesson, easy to understand. You should all at least try to score a full score in this. All right, so I'm stopping here. I'll end the class. In the next class, we'll have now on Thursday. All right. Okay, then. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Lens law and energy conservation. Definitely, Hamza. They'll be asking it. All right. Any other doubt, you can ask me. 